Hi, and welcome to Studio SN. My name is Sarah Newman, and today is part one of our Christmas card series here on Studio SN. Merry Christmas. Today I want to show you a fast and easy technique for adding quick color and texture to your Christmas cards. Let's look at the background of my card. This really pretty blue is actually just a brayered application of paint. So it's super easy to do and it's perfect if you are making batches of cards for the holidays, as many of us do. So let's take a look at the process. First I'm going to bring in a piece of scrap paper and this is just to keep the mess uh, of my area to a minimum. And I'm working on matte cardstock, and I, I chose an off-white for this to coordinate with the craft of my card base, that craft color. Now you can work with a glossy cardstock if you want to, and this is this nice smooth matte card. So whichever way you like to go. The paint I'm using is from Ranger, and this is the Dilutions line. This is in London Blue. And I also need to have a brayer on hand. This is also Ranger's brayer. As you can tell, I use it quite a lot. So I'm going to put a little bit of the Dilutions paint onto my palette. Now you could work right onto your craft sheet if you wanted to. I just like to be able to pick up my little palette and move it out of the way. Now I've got a palette knife here and I'm just going to pick up a little bit of this color and put it right onto my palette. That way I don't um, overdo it. I don't want to try and dip my brayer into the jar. And this is just going to help me get just as much as I need but not waste any. Now this is a fluid acrylic paint. It dries really quickly, so you do want to make sure when you're working with this, always put the lid back on as quickly as you can. Now that I have this on my palette, I'll move this back in, pick up some of the paint on my brayer, and when I brayer this across my cardstock, I'm gonna start at one short end, and I'm just going to run the color across here like so. Then to go back on the other side, I'm just going to brayer it the other direction. Now you can smooth out some of the markings on here. You can go back and add a little bit more and smooth this out if you want to. You can add as much paint or keep it as little as you'd like. I wanted some of that cream to be showing through there so that I get a nice um, uh, contrast on there. So I'm going to set this aside and also move aside my scrap paper. And I'm just going to let this dry for a couple of minutes. You can also hit it with your heat gun if you want to. Now once that's dry, of course you can use it as is, like I did on my card. You could also die cut from this, you could punch elements from it, you can stamp right on it, you can do um, lots of different things. Let me bring back in the card and you can see that I've simply mounted it up onto red and then onto a black cardstock before putting it onto that craft base. And you can see the reason that I chose the off-white rather than going with a white cardstock is to pick up the warm tones in that craft card base that I've got there. Now for the rest of the card I've got two die cut pieces on here and I want to talk a little bit about this as well. So the die cuts that I'm working with are from Hot Off The Press, and this is the six layered labels and two swirls cutting dies. So I'm using this big element here for the red piece, which is this one right here. And then the smaller one that nests inside has been used for the stamped sentiment. So let me grab one of these because a lot of times people will ask me, do you die cut first or do you stamp first? And I always die cut first. That's just my personal preference and I find that it works better when I'm getting ready to position my stamp rather than stamping and then trying to position the cutting die. So I have my stamp mounted up onto my clear acrylic block and this is gonna make it really easy for me to see where to go. The stamps I'm working with are from Hot Off The Press. This is the Naughty and Nice Christmas uh, Saying stamp set. So you can see on here you've got lots of um, fun sentiments on there, both of the naughty and nice variety. I chose a simple uh, nice stamp, so it just says Merry Christmas, keeping things easy and simple. And I'll ink this up. I'm using my Jet Black Archival ink pad. This is also from Ranger, and this is one of my go-to black ink pads. And then I can simply position this here in the center and press. And I can make sure that I've got my positioning right where I want it to be. And you can see how that creates a really pretty sort of shadow effect on there. And then all I need to do is add it to the front of my card. So I've popped this red die cut piece up on foam tape and then the off white piece is also up on foam tape too. Now I didn't color in the, um, the stamp sentiment there. You could use pens or colored pencils to color that in if you wanted to. 
So I've just added a little um, red gingham bow on here. That goes nicely with the red and off-white baker's twine that I have wrapped around the corner, wrapped around the center here. So this is just a strip of craft cardstock mounted up onto black. That's been wrapped around and the ends of the ribbon are underneath my die cut pieces here. So I have a little bit of lift in dimension without it being a really bulky card that's going to be super expensive to mail. So those of you who are also mailing your Christmas cards, this is a great way to get some color and texture without having it be a very lumpy, bumpy, and expensive card to mail. So this is how you can create fast, fabulous painted backgrounds. Great for cards for Christmas or really for any occasion. I hope you enjoyed today's show. For more ideas and inspiration, please stop by my website at sarahnewman.com. If you enjoyed today's video, I invite you to subscribe to Studio SN on YouTube, and I'll keep you updated with a new video every Wednesday. Thank you for joining me on Studio SN, and I will see you again next time.